I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my Animal Education Series. Today here with Dr. Rick Esmer. Hello. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. Yeah. What are we doing here tonight? Okay. Uh, so my lab is doing research on the state-threatened Illinois chorus frog, uh, and it is found in Madison County and a few other places in Illinois. Um, associated with sand prairie. So where we are now is kind of an agricultural area now, but historically it would have been sand prairie. And these frogs burrow underground uh, for most of their lives, and they only come up a couple weeks out of the year to breed, and we're at one of their breeding ponds. So why did you guys choose a specific frog to study? Uh, well, it's, it's interesting for a number of reasons. Uh, one is it's kind of a mystery because uh, because they spend so much time underground, they're really poorly studied. We know very little in terms of uh, what they do for a living, what they're doing when they're underground. There's pretty good evidence that they're eating underground, uh, but where their habitat is is even a mystery. So we don't know, uh, for we know what they're doing when they're out breeding, but the rest of the time we don't know where they are uh, specifically. Uh, what sort of characteristics uh, they look for when they you know, try to find habitat to burrow in, how far they move underground, things like that. So just simple questions. Another reason I'm interested in them is just uh, uh, morphologically, behaviorally. Uh, that's kind of one of my areas of, of research interest is animal locomotion. And these frogs, when they're underground, they're burrowing like moles. Uh, they burrow four limbs first, which is I believe they're the only frogs that do that. Most frogs, like spadefoot toads, will uh, burrow with their hind limbs. Uh, these frogs burrow with their forelimbs. So we're, we're interested in them uh, for a number of reasons. Another reason is that um, the university that we're affiliated with, Southern Illinois University Edwardsville, uh, is borders this area and actually includes some of their uh, sand prairie habitat. So. Uh, it's a kind of a great model system for students that are interested in amphibian conservation. So what are you really doing to uh, help study these frogs? So we have a number of approaches. Um, again, just basically trying to figure out what sorts of uh, habitat the, the frogs are utilizing. Uh, so they're being threatened on a number of fronts. Uh, one is uh, there, it, there are roads cutting through their habitat, so there's high mortality uh, due to that development because uh, Edwardsville is a really rapidly growing area. It's a, a suburb of St. Louis. Uh, it is developing really quickly and warehouses are being placed in their habitat. Uh, so that's threatening them as well. All the light and noise and things like that. Uh, there, there are issues with fish getting into their breeding ponds or bullfrogs, which are predators uh, preying on them. So uh, we're interested in trying to figure out what we can do to, uh, to help them out um, to, to breed successfully. Last year there was flooding in this area and probably very little reproductive success as a result because fish were in all of their breeding ponds. So we're studying uh, using radio telemetry. We track frogs to try to figure out where they're coming from, where they're going to. Uh, we're studying their crossings, like uh, where the road mortality is highest, uh, and we also have a study examining the possibility of incorporating small little artificial breeding ponds within their habitat that might kind of buffer them from some of the fish and the bullfrogs that are their predators. How many artificial ponds have you gone? have? Out there uh, so far? Right now we have 40 ponds, and these are basically um, large cement mixing tubs that we got from Home Depot so they're about you know this this large uh, and hopefully that's too small for bullfrogs and fish to you know really utilize uh, and you know to try to keep other frogs from breeding in them so it's really targeting these small little chorus frogs is the goal. And what are we going to do here tonight to help find these frogs? Uh, so Alexis has a, a an antenna and a receiver uh, we have put uh, radio transmitters on several frogs um, around their waist with the antenna kind of dragging behind them and she uh, tracks where they are on a daily basis so we're going to go find some of these frogs and see where they are 
uh, try to kind of learn about their behavior that way. Well, let's go find some frogs. Okay. It's kind of sandy right now, isn't it? <laughs> Not usually what it looks like. So, they're, uh, when they don't have sand on them, they're really gorgeous little frogs. Um, they're pretty closely related to the western chorus frogs, which a lot of people see in their backyards, which are much more slender. These frogs are really stocky for this group, for the chorus frog group. Um, and one of the things, if you look at their forelimbs, you can see that they, ha you know, they're pretty, pretty robust for forelimbs. Um, that's what they're using to dig. And this is a male. We can tell it's a male because it has a dark patch underneath the throat. And they're smaller generally than the females. And you can definitely see the little antenna here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can get that on camera. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Look at the camera. And what really got you into frogs? Uh, well, I think that really goes back to when I was a little kid. I was always uh, really interested in animals, um, and frogs in particular were interesting to me because of their locomotion. Um, I was pretty fascinated with, you know, uh, you know how they move, how they're able to jump as far as they do. Uh, they are a typical kind of laboratory animal for like every science class, high school biology, etc. uses frogs as kind of a model organism. So I was really fascinated by them. And uh, when I realized that there was so much le uh, left to learn about them, um, especially in terms of how they move, uh, that's what really drew me in. And what other uh, species of amphibians did we encounter today? Uh, so, let's see, we saw the Illinois chorus frogs, obviously, with the transmitters. Uh, we had American toads, uh, gray tree frogs. Um, let's see, we heard western chorus frogs, cricket frogs, and bullfrogs. So we had a, had a bullfrog, we had uh, southern leopard frogs. So, yeah, a lot of diversity. I think we heard spring peepers as well. So this area attracts a lot of different species. Um, so we picked a pretty good night to see a lot of different frogs. Are most of these frogs nocturnal, and that's why we're here at night? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you can encounter some of them any time of the day. Like, you know, you've seen toads hopping through your, your yard uh, in the daytime. But typically, uh, many, many of these frogs are they're most active at night. So that's certainly the case for the Illinois chorus frog. During the daytime, they are usually burrowed under the sand, uh, and then they seem to move more and be more active at night. Well, thank you so much for uh, telling us all about these chorus frogs and telling us about other species of frogs and toads we have out here. Yeah, no, no problem. Happy to do it. I'm glad to be out here. All right, cool. Thanks. And as always, if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to the channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Kosher. As always, I'll see you next week.